we have another pro-life win in the state of Kentucky. Hello and welcome to Sweet Home California. My name is Jennifer and um, I don't know too much about this bill. I hadn't actually heard much about it until I got a, um, a notice in my inbox from the Epoch Times that the Kentucky legislature has overridden a governor veto. So they were able to get a supermajority in both their their uh, Senate and um, and House of Representatives at the state level to override the Democrat uh, governor's veto. Makes me kind of wonder, how how is it that Kentucky is able to maintain a supermajority Republican in both their Senate and their House, and somehow they manage to get a Democrat as the governor? If anybody knows the history on that, the, how that vote went, please comment down below. But anyhow, let me go ahead and share with you some highlights of this bill. So, um, this is a bill that the governor had vetoed, and uh, on the 13th, the lawmakers went ahead and overrode it, uh, 31 to 6 uh, in the House of Representatives, and the Kentucky Senate voted 76 to 21. I think they may have that backwards, because I thought the Senate was always a smaller house than, uh, a smaller chamber than the House. Um, that may be a an error, and the thing that bothers me about errors whether it be spelling errors or things like that, is that if they have an error in something that simple, you know, are the facts entirely correct? So I do appreciate the Epoch Times, but sometimes, uh, you know, I do see a lot of um, some careless mistakes. So let me know what you, your thoughts are on that in the comments as well. But anyhow, according to this, uh, House Bill 3, and there is a link to the PDF file, which I just don't have time to go through right now, um, is going to go immediately into effect. Among the provisions is going to make a person who, quote, intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly performs an abortion upon a minor without obtaining the required consent guilty of a felony. Now, what that required consent is, I'm assuming it's a parent or guardian. Uh, also, it will require every abortion to be reported to the state government with details, including the name and address of the physician who performed the procedure, establishing requirements for doctors who provide abortion inducing drugs. Uh, Bashir said he vetoed the bill because it lacked exceptions for rape or incest, and also it is going to reduce abortions to 15 weeks uh, down from the current 20 weeks. Um, so, uh, of course, there are the Democrats that said that this is this is terrible. There was a, a, a female uh, Democrat who unfortunately was raped when she was 14, and she said that she opposed the bill because it, it lacked that exception. Uh, but then there was a, a female Republican who voted for the bill and said that, uh, quote, the abortion of a baby is plain wrong, and I pray that God would have mercy on anyone that would take the life of a child. Uh, and I, I certainly echo those sentiments. Um, and I and I pray for the people who, um, who feel that they are in that sort of situation that that's their only option. Uh, there are so many people out there that would love to adopt a child. Uh, this is from State Senate or State Rep Representative Norma Kirk McCormick, uh, and she says, "But we're slaughtering them as fast as we can get." as fast as they can get an abortion in an abortion clinic. Of course, Planned Parenthood and the American Civil Liberties Union have vowed to file a lawsuit against the law, saying that no one should be forced to carry a pregnancy against their will. Let's, uh, we'll see Kentucky in court. And uh, Susan B. Anthony List uh, is among the people who were cheering the vote and that were proud that the Kentucky legislature is standing up um, to the pro-abortion Governor Bashir. And, um, and that they hope that the Supreme Court will soon allow the people and their legislators nationwide to enact laws that save lives. And um, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, obviously, it's a very touchy subject uh, when, when things are excluding rape and incest. Um, but there are uh, studies that show that women who keep the child, even in those circumstances, have better mental health outcomes, whether or not they decide to raise the child or give it up for adoption, than women who, uh, they've already been victimized once by, by the act of the rape or the incest, um, and then they are victimized again when they have that, that uh, abortion. And so they, they have worse mental health outcomes at, after that. Um, one of the one of the comments in there was about uh, forcing women to have have children against their will. Um, 
so how do we how do we address that how do we make it how do we encourage it to be their will how do we encourage women to have that make that choice for life um do laws influence people's thoughts on these sort of things for instance what what was the american sentiment about abortion before it was legalized versus after it was legalized and of course you know it may not have been an overnight thing but you know what was it 5 10 15 years after the roe v wade um so if we have these laws that then of course it would be great if we could make people have a culture of life and and freely make that choice but what happens um, but but do the laws maybe help people to change their views on it? For instance, um, if someone is in difficult financial situation and abortion is legal, does a woman feel undue pressure to go ahead with that abortion because it's legal? Does that does that then give a a cover of morality to it? Uh, a cover of well, this is my responsibility to take care of this so that I'm not a burden to my boyfriend or to my family or to my friends. Whereas if it's then illegal, does that then change her mind to be like, oh, well, I'm just going to have to, to, you know, step up. And, you know, people who have children tend to be people who have jobs, people who are more responsible, not of course in every case, but uh, might this not help people rise to the occasion? There are studies that show that men who are married are more successful than men who remain single. Uh, so, again, is this the chicken? Is this the chicken or the egg thing? You know, is the law going to help make us a more pro-life country, or um, is this going to be people? Um, you know, is, is this going to be resulting in in back alley abortions that are going to be more dangerous? For the women, of course, we all know that in every successful abortion, 50% it has a 50% mortality rate. Um, and there's also been evidence shown that these um, statistics of of mortality in back alley deaths before Roe v. Wade was legalized were highly exaggerated and completely made up out of thin air. Dr. Bernard Nathanson, um, who was a staunch abortion advocate. Uh, before it got passed, you know, he's, he has said that he made up those statistics. And of course he did have a conversion later on in life before he died that he was then pro-life because of the advent of, among other things, the ultrasound. Um, so anyhow, really would like to know your thoughts on this. Um, is this going to, to help or is this going to hurt the pro-life cause? I will talk to you later. God bless and thank you so much for watching.